Okay, so now we are going to talk uh, a bit here about plantar fasciitis and this is brought to you by Progressive Physiotherapy and the Cardiac Fitness Clinic. So let's go. Alright, so what exactly is plantar fasciitis? So plantar fasciitis really is um, <clears throat> like the, um, loosely defined as, an, as the inflammation of the plantar fascia. So of course you're asking what exactly is the um, plantar fascia. So the plantar fascia really is this thick ligament here that starts at the heel and it runs under the foot and then connects to the toe bones. And this is a tough ligament that is um, there for art support of the foot uh, which is responsible for shock absorption. The reason you have an arch in the foot is for uh, shock absorption. So what are the symptoms and signs of plantar fasciitis? So a lot of people report that, for example, getting out of bed in the morning, that they experience this sharp pain in the heels as they put the foot on the floor. And the pain itself, it will tend to reduce as they keep uh, walking for a bit. And the reason for this is as you get up, um, the plantar fascia, it's a bit shortened uh, while you sleep. And then as you step on the floor, you actually try to stretch this, violently stretch this um, shortened tissue. And this is what gives you um, the pain. Um, as you walk, the tissue moves from a shortened um, state to a slightly longer state. And that is why the pain tends to ease up as the plantar fascia is a bit longer now. Now you have less strain on the attachment point at the heel. Uh, also, throughout the day, a person, while they are sitting for a while, and then as they get up to walk, that's when again they feel that um, sharp pain in the heel that can uh, subside when the person is, uh, or as you begin to walk. Uh, as well as if you have a chronic plantar fasciitis, it would tend to actually uh, show a heel spur. And uh, now the heel spur, as, it, as you see it on the x-ray here, a heel spur really, it is um, this calcium deposit that uh, is deposited in the plantar fascia which attaches to the heel. The uh, plantar um, fascia, as it is, becomes chronically inflamed, what you have is calcium deposits being um, de um, in the plantar fascia itself. And that's why you see the heel spur um, on the x-ray. Now the heel spur itself is not the actual cause of the pain. The actual cause of the pain is uh, plantar fasciitis and when plantar fasciitis is actually um, chronic, uh, you get the heel spur um, in the plantar fascia which then shows up on the x-ray. So who gets uh, plantar fasciitis? Well, you got um, long distance runners because if you are constantly running, you're constantly going to keep um, stretching and straining that um, plantar fascia. Um, so that's one reason why runners would get uh, plantar uh, fasciitis. Also, if you are overweight, uh, if you're overweight, what you tend to have is you're asking the plantar fascia to actually support uh, more weight. So the risk of plantar fasciitis developing is greater. Also, shoes without proper support. Now, when I say proper support, uh, I'm, I'm not necessarily speaking about um, shoes that are, are soft, but rather if you don't have a proper art support uh, in the shoe, uh, what tends to happen is that you overwork the plantar fascia. And this is what this is also a risk factor for plantar fasciitis. So shoes without proper support in the insoles um, can lead to can put you at higher risk for plantar fasciitis as you go about your daily activities. Now here we have some examples of some insoles with um, proper art support as you can see here. Um, let's go back there. All right. Okay as you can see here there is a proper art support here. Now uh, a word about art support. Now sometimes when you um, buy insoles uh, what you tend to have is in the package you would see that there is an arch in the insoles and you may tend to think that uh, this is um, adequate um, that this arch is adequate and not, not necessarily so um, a lot of times the insoles that you purchase when you press on the the arch of the insole it basically can um, deform um, pretty easily with only a couple of pounds of pressure so as you can imagine if uh, the arch of an insole it uh, it is compressed very easily. It is unlikely to give you adequate art support as you step on the insole. Now, this brand of insoles here, Power Step, it has proper art support and it's um, fairly, um, fairly firm, and it can give you um, adequate art support. So, depending on the brand of insoles that you are using, that is when you can get proper art support. Not all insoles that have proper uh, support uh, have proper arch in the in the, the shape means it's actually going to give you proper art support okay 
So what are the causes of plantar fasciitis? Now, first of all, the plantar fascia, that ligament that runs from the, the heel to the toes, it's there to absorb shock. It's there to support the arch of the foot. And when the arch of the foot, and the reason again you have an arch is to support, uh, is to absorb shock. So now if you are, have, if you are engaging in activity which there is repetitive stressing and straining of the plantar fascia, and then there are repetitive tears, this can lead to inflammation. And uh, that is the general mechanism of plantar fasciitis. That is the plantar fascia constantly being, constantly being stretched and strained, and then it, uh, it will actually tear. You get some uh, micro tears within the plantar fascia, which then leads to inflammation, and the inflammation is what causes the pain of plantar fasciitis, especially on the, the attachment point at the heel of the foot. So what are the, the risk factors for plantar uh, fasciitis? Well, those between the ages of 40 to 60, they tend to, um, that's, that's the age group where you tend to get uh, plantar fasciitis um, generally uh, developing. Also, if you are a long distance runner or engage in long distance running, this also is a risk factor for plantar fasciitis. And this is because there is repetitive, again, stressing and straining of the plantar fascia as you, as you are running. Also, activities like aerobic dance or what you would call um, um, Zumba. Um, this is also a risk factor for plantar fasciitis with you always landing on the foot all the time You are constantly stressing and straining that um, plantar fascia. This makes you um, at risk for developing plantar fasciitis Also uh, flat feet high arches and abnormal walking now if you have flat feet it is um, chances that your plantar fascia is actually has been very um, um, stretched out and the shock absorbing capability of the foot is reduced so with flat feet that is the mechanism uh, by which you are at risk for developing plantar fasciitis uh, with high arches if you genetically have um, high arches if that's the natural um, shape of your foot um, it is um, likely that um, genetically your plantar fascia is not as flexible as others and so it um, may not absorb shock as well as um, people with normal arches of course the trade-off is that if you have um, high arches it makes you a better sprinter but again the trade-off is that it puts you at risk for um, plantar fasciitis um, an abnormal walking pattern now let's say you develop a foot injury you were in a car accident you fractured your leg or you fractured your foot and now it, it, it heals um, but now you develop an abnormal walking pattern the abnormal walking pattern may actually cause you to distribute weight improperly under the foot and then thereby stressing out the plantar fascia um, more so than usual so again, so an abnormal walking pattern by, let's say you were born again with maybe a particular um, defect, a, a leg then discrepancy, certain abnormality of the foot um, being involved in an accident. Um, this can put you at risk for plantar fasciitis more so than the average person. Uh, obesity. Uh, again, if you are overweight, you are asking the plantar fascia to um, bear more weight um, than, than usual. And, uh, this is a risk factor for developing plantar fasciitis. Uh, being on your feet a lot, for example, a, a police officer, um, a teacher, uh, can also put you at risk for plantar fasciitis because you, you're asking the plantar fascia to do more work, and this is uh, a risk factor uh, for plantar fasciitis. Uh, working on hard surfaces, for example, if you are a construction worker and you are um, in, in improper footwear and you are also on working on hard surfaces, you are on your, the, the hard surface means that the, the foot, the plantar fascia, as well as the shock absorbing mechanism of your foot has more work to do because of the hard surface okay and this um, puts you at risk for plantar fasciitis um, what about the complications of plantar uh, fasciitis now let's say you develop um, an, an abnormal walking pattern because uh, let's say one foot has severe plantar fasciitis and now you're trying to compensate by putting more weight on the other foot um, over time if you keep um, doing this um, you, you know, an imbalance is, is um, definitely going to develop and what is going to happen is that you may find yourself developing back pain, hip pain and knee pains as a result of you trying to compensate for the, the ongoing plantar fasciitis. Okay, so what about diagnosing plantar fasciitis? Um, it is very rare that um, you are going to need a scan. That, that's rare. Um, generally, the, the um, doctor's interview uh, where you tell the doctor the pattern of the pain, for example, you say, hey doc, when I get up in the morning and I put my foot on the floor, uh, my heel hurts, I have to tiptoe or, or limp for a while and then the pain subsides. Uh, and then the doctor does an examination, um, asks ask you, to, he feels the, the calf muscle, if the calf muscle feel a bit tight or stiff, 
uh, if there's reduced calf flexibility upon the physical examination, if the, plant, if the arch of the foot is painful when the doctor is pressing into the arch of the foot. Um, the, this combined with the, the history of the pain or the pattern of the pain that you are describing can give a, a fairly accurate diagnosis of plantar fasciitis. Now, again, I said imaging tests are generally uh, unnecessary, but let's say the, the pattern of pain you're describing is not typical of plantar fasciitis. If the physical exam gives results that are not typical of plantar fasciitis and the doctor um, suspects maybe you have a stress um, fracture or pinch nerve, in this case, this is where x-rays or MRIs may actually become necessary to um, hone in on the, act the actual diagnosis. Okay, now what about uh, treating plantar fasciitis? So generally you would think about the, um, the, the conservative or the, um, the non-surgical and then on the other end you have the, um, the surgical um, treat, uh, treatment. Always advisable to go conservative or non-surgical first. So in treating plantar fasciitis, what we're looking at here is uh, massage therapy, uh, very useful. Uh, not just massage therapy under the foot, but also the calf muscles. A lot of people ignore the calf muscles in um, dealing, with the, dealing with plantar fasciitis. And the reason the calf muscle is, must be dealt with is that if you have tight calves, then it doesn't allow a proper ankle, the ankle to flex properly. Okay? And this would re result in an inefficient walking pattern or an abnormal walking pattern, which can trigger plantar fasciitis or it can exacerbate existing plantar fasciitis. Okay, so not just under the foot we're dealing with here, but you got to deal with the calf. You got to go a bit further up the chain, and also at times you you may have to de deal with maybe scoliosis or hip misalignment as well. Okay, um, fascia release. So. There are certain deep tissue methods or other techniques that can be used with, um, ad with additional massage tools which can release the plantar, uh, which can do fascia release under the foot. Uh, with the repetitive stress and strain, what, what may happen is that with the plantar fascia, some scar tissue may develop and attach the plantar fascia to the, uh, underlying, uh, to the underlying skin or overlying skin. And this causes the plantar fascia to not move or glide uh, properly. So by doing certain release, uh, release techniques with um, massage tools, for example, maybe grass stun technique or gua sha or, or fascia release, um, just about all, all of them are basically related. They are, they are similar. And by doing that, that, that release, put here, um, what you can do, you can actually break away some of the scar tissue that attaches the plantar fascia to the uh, overlying skin. So, and this can help with the treatment of plantar fasciitis. Um, with the personal experience at the clinic, I found that when we are incorporating the fascia release, the results tend to be um, uh, better overall since we started to apply this method. Uh, physical therapy, um, for example, uh, exercises and stretching for the calves as well as the plantar fascia under the foot uh, are very useful. Uh, a physical therapist may also use um, TENS treatment, um, which is a form of electrical stimulation. Uh, as well as um, therapeutic ultrasound can be used to um, by a physiotherapist or massage therapist to um, to help with um, plantar fasciitis. Now, certain additional tools can be used. For example, plantar fasciitis strap, night splints, or orthotics. Uh, orthotics are just basically um, a fancy word for insoles. So let's talk about the plantar fasciitis strap. Uh, now, in a similar manner, if you get a back injury, uh, you may need to wear a back belt to support the, uh, the back muscles as well as the ligaments of the back in order for you to heal properly. That is the same principle here with the, um, the plantar fasciitis uh, strap. It's basically, it is a belt for the plantar fascia and, and it is supporting the plantar fascia, giving it a chance to heal um, in those who have plantar uh, fasciitis. Then there is the night splint. Okay? Now, normally at night when you're sleeping, you know, your, your foot will hang forward like this. Okay? And what you may have is the, some, maybe some shortening of the calf muscle as you're sleeping because of the foot in, in this position. As, so, but if you wear a night splint, I say you wear it at night, it's going to keep the foot from, take the foot from this position to more this position here. And what you get is some, you sleep and you allow the calf muscle to stretch as well as you can allow the, the plantar fascia to stretch at night uh, while you're sleeping. So when you get up in the morning and you put the f your foot on the floor, um, you, you're, not, you're not putting, you're not um, loading up a, a tightened plantar fascia as you normally would. Because of the splint, you know, awake with a slightly lengthened plantar fascia. So when you put your foot on the floor, the pain may not be severe as before or it may not be there at all. Um, normally, you have to wear a nice splint, maybe three to five nights, depending on the severity for you to really get the relief. Um, from plantar fasciitis. Always advisable to use this in conjunction with um, your therapies. 
again, I said orthotics, so basically a fancy word for shoe insoles. Um, again, to proper insoles with proper art support uh, is key in treating plantar fasciitis. Okay, also do we looking at anti-inflammatories or on, on home exercises? Uh, anti-inflammatories may be needed by those who maybe have some severe plantar fasciitis and in conjunction with the therapies may use some anti-inflammatory medication to help with, with pain control. Okay, and then there are also the home exercises. Now, home exercises, for example, can be recommended by a therapist or your physiotherapist or massage therapist. Uh, for example, rolling, rolling your foot on a golf ball at home can help to release the plantar fascia tissue. Um, it, the golf ball basically, these exercises are basically to continue on with what was done in the clinic. It's not a matter of you coming to the clinic, getting treated, and you're going home and, and you're not doing anything. There's also always homework to do whenever you're trying to treat plantar fasciitis. And part of your homework will be to roll your foot on a golf ball or even a tennis ball to help to continue to keep that plantar fascia loose. Also, the calf muscles. Once again, again, we're not ignoring the calf muscles. We generally will have to attend to them. Uh, a muscle roller or foam roller, as you see here, can be used at home to roll and massage the calf muscles, making them a bit looser, um, giving them more flexibility, um, giving the ankle greater mobility. If you don't have a muscle roller, this, you can use a tennis ball or a cricket ball and put it under the w one calf muscle at a time and you do th that backward and forward sort of a roll that will help to loosen and keep that, that, um, those calf muscles um, flexible. Also calf stretching, um, this position that you're seeing here uh, allows you to um, stretch the calf muscles and keep them flexible, They're very simple stuff. Also there are foam wedges that can be purchased online which can help you to um, stretch your calf muscles if maybe holding this position is a bit difficult for you for, for whatever reason. Maybe some of the foam wedges here can help you to stretch the calf muscles more effectively. Okay, now we're going to steroid injections. Um, a lot of people ask us about if we offer steroid injections. At our clinic we don't, um, but if you want we can refer you outside to, to do that. Now, for steroid injections, that's, with steroid injections, you need to understand that it is not solving the problem. It, it may offer temporary pain relief, okay, if you, if you have severe plantar fasciitis and it is um, affecting your quality of life, if it is uh, keeping you from working and earning a living, then by all means, it's a personal choice, you, you go ahead and, and you can get it. Um, but know that there is the risk of possible rupture of the uh, plantar fascia if you use steroid injections. Um, if steroid injections are done more than four times a year, your risk of diabetes goes up. It, can, it may make you pre-diabetic, uh, it may worsen your existing diabetes. So you, you have to really temper the use of the steroid injections. Uh, now because the steroid injection does not actually deal with the problem, it's really more symptom control. If the pain does return, it can return worse than before. And this is because if you get the steroid injection and you get that, that, that reduction in pain, you may be tempted to go back to your original activity and not actually deal with the problem. So when the steroid um, injection wears off, what tends to happen is that the pain returns worse than before. Okay, so you, you have to be aware of that. If you do if you do get a steroid injection, it is highly recommended you still do the therapy, get the pain relief, but do the therapy, deal with the problem. That, that's our advice. Uh, when it comes to surgery, okay, now the surgical method here is where you actually detach the plantar fascia from the heel bone. Okay, so there is no attachment. Uh, when that is done, the plantar fascia is no longer attached to the heel bone, and the, yeah, so the pain um, just generally tend to go away, but know that the, remember the plantar fascia was there to support the arch of the foot. So when you cut the plantar fascia, what tends to happen is that you weaken the arch of the foot. Okay, so just be aware of that. Right? Um, lifestyle. Okay, yeah, sorry, uh, okay, sorry but we had a bit of a break in the um, connection there. Okay, so what tends to happen is, okay, so let's say your shoes are either cutting on the inside or the outside, okay? And you decide to buy a pair of insoles. Now, if you put in a pair of insoles in shoes that are worn out and either the inside or the, the outside, what may happen is that you may not actually benefit properly from the insoles, okay? So if, you're get, if you have worn out shoes and you're getting insoles, it is advisable that you put aside those worn out shoes, get a new pair of shoes in which to start using the, using the insoles. And also there is cycling between the cycling between physical activities. So let's say your typical activity is, is running and you have plantar fasciitis. Uh, we're not trying to discourage anyone from um, stopping their 
your physical activity but you may want to cycle between long distance running or you're running and maybe some swimming or maybe some stationary biking okay, you need to give the plantar fascia a bit of a rest while you're trying to treat plantar fasciitis uh, applying ice for example if after a long run you may want to apply some ice under your foot to keep the inflammation down a bit it's more of a pain control method again after a run or before a run or before your physical activity or during your physical activity you want to stretch the calves stretch the arches and again to incorporating the plantar fasciitis strap um, let's say in your work shoes to help support the plantar fascia and again to the nice splint you want to wear that three to five nights in a row to really start seeing some results um, with plantar fasciitis okay so that uh, concludes the live broadcast on plantar fasciitis if you want to come and see us we are available in Chin Chin Road and Kunopir. Um that's our number there you can call or WhatsApp us at 747-5297 and our clinic is going to try to really put out more and more useful content out there um, for our viewers. Okay, so um, this is uh, Dr. Sinanan signing off. Um, really hope you enjoy that. Thanks.